Uh, good evening. Pursuant to the Virginia Freedom of Information Hold on. Act. We, what? we need to. We what? haven't started the meeting yet. Oh, I thought we were. <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, okay. Um, sorry, our chair is late with a flat tire, so we'll start now. Um, could you call the roll, please? Certainly. Uh, Mr. Ankuma? Yes. Uh, Ms. Carney? Yes. Mr. Lawrence? Here. Mr. Sharp? Here. All right, we have a quorum. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, pursuant to the Virginia Freedom of Information Act, I move that the board convene a closed meeting for the following purpose to discuss or consider the identified subject matter. Personnel under Section 2.2-3711A1, in particular, staff appointments, reappointments, resignations, a retirement, child care leave, and EPED assignment and advisory committee appointments, and student matters under Section 2.2-3711A2, in particular, non-resident tuition student. Is there a second? Second. All right, I'll look. Do we need a roll call? Okay. Aye. Yes. Yes. Okay, uh, could I get a motion to reconvene to an open meeting? So moved. Is there a second? second? Would you like me to certify? Mr. Kimball? Would you like me to certify the closed meeting and then we do the. Do we need do we need a roll call for open? After mm -mm. Okay. Mm -mm. I'll certify and then we do it. All right, whereas the Falls Church Public School Board has convened a closed meeting on this date pursuant to an affirmative recorded vote and in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act, and whereas Section 2.2-3711B of the Code of Virginia requires a certification by this school board that such closed meeting was conducted in conformity with Virginia law. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Falls Church Public School Board hereby certifies that, to the best of each member's knowledge, one, only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirement by Virginia law were discussed in the closed meeting, to which this certification applies, and two, only such public business matters as were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered. Second. Mr. Ankuma. Ms. Carney. Yes. Mr. Lawrence. Yes. Mr. Sharp. Yes. Mr. Webb. Yes. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, could we all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. No, I think it's for the air. Oh, okay. All right, uh, now we come to the public comment section. Do we have anybody here who'd like to speak? Do we have any speaker slips? Uh, we would need to adopt the agenda. Oh, I apologize. Do I have a motion to adopt the agenda, please? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, now we're into the public comment phase. Do we have anything? We do not, sir. Okay, anybody who's here who would like to speak? Please. Yeah, just uh, come up here. You have three minutes. Uh, give your name, address, and time's yours. My name is Blanca Plaza Snyder. Um, I live, my exact address is 1003 Lincoln Avenue here in Falls Church City. Um, and I just say good evening. Uh, one point that I would like the school board to consider is the use of the STAR for the identification of gifted and talented for ACE students, um, especially in the lower uh, grade levels. Uh, this test as it was created as uh, was to be used as a diagnostic tool and when used appropriately it serves the purpose of monitoring student progress for those who might be struggling in content areas of math or reading so it's wonderful to be uh, monitoring that and seeing how the kids are progressing however um, the use of the test in the current manner uh, because it's not being used appropriately or it's not meant to be used in this manner it invalidates the test uh, and so maybe something to consider would be returning to the way it was before with especially like more kindergarten first grade where teachers uh, see uh, and identify maybe some some kiddos and then the enrichment coordinator thereby does her own assessment or perhaps using another more appropriate tool. Thanks. Thank you. All right. If there's no one else, we'll close the public session. Um, over to the superintendent for the facilities report. Mr. Padilla, we will invite you forward for the facilities report. <laughs> 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 
Ms. Crowley. Book and facilities. All right, give me one second. I can find where I was. There we go. Good evening. Um, so I'm just I'm doing the 2015 uh, safety and security uh, report that we do every year. I'm gonna be quick. I think all of you have a copy um, of what we, what I sent to Marty and she sent over. Um, just the highlights of the year. We're just continuing to work with um, our transitioning from Fairfax County to the city's fire marshal, building inspectors, that kind of stuff. They're still learning our buildings at Mason and Mary Ellen. So. Um, every time they come over for a new inspection, they're finding a new room or something to, to, to look at. So we're getting closer to them uh, being fully functional in our, in our facilities. Um, we, did, we added the TJ modular classrooms this summer. Um, obviously for the security side, we, it was cameras, access control, burglary alarms, fire alarms. Um, it took a lot of coordination with the city to get that going. So. Um, I don't know if we could have made the deadline had they not kind of stepped up and helped us out in a lot of, a lot of cases to speed up the process um, since we had such a tight uh, window there. Um, what else we did? This year we opened Jesse Thackeray Preschool, obviously. Um, uh, that, again, that took a lot of the city staff's time to get us, to get us in, uh, rushing a lot of things and as far as our fire alarms, sprinklers, generators, access control, cameras. These are all things that were put in by um, facilities department and not through the construction so um, just getting all that in was a um, was a lot this year um, we continue to have major repairs at Mason for the fire alarm intercom uh, the building's just aging so bad a lot of the, the wires are degrading especially out to our trailers we've had to redig and trench the new lines out still working on a, a an open one right now but everything's active and, and operational um, and it's just every, every day we're finding more and more and it's um, it's hard to predict what's going to go, what's going to fail. So thankfully, Mr. Kimball has helped us with uh, making sure we have enough funds to to cover all of our expenses on that. Um, just completed the um, preventative maintenance for all of our access control system. We test every piece of equipment all, every single year. So our card readers, all the the stuff in the ceilings that that make it all work. The stuff in our IT closets that our that our IT team helps us with. Um, we continue to replace non-functional cameras. Um, that's something that's just a continue a pro thing where we do almost weekly. There's always a camera going bad, needs adjustment, um, needs rebooting, whatever it may be. Um, a big thing that we're working on, we've started working on it. It'll it'll finish in the fiscal year 16 budget year. Uh, is relocating our repeater. Um, you may or may not, our repeater is our is basically our cell tower, so to speak, that runs our bus radios, emergency radios. Um, it's previous, but previously was housed on the city, oh, no, an old city water tower, no longer city. So I have to go into Fairfax County to get to the site and everything. So we actually moved it over to the roof of Mary Ellen. Um, with b new buildings being built, trees, you name it, it's just our coverage over the last few years has just gotten worse and worse. So we're going to have to add another repeater. Uh, we're working on that with, um, with our contractor and hopefully that'll go in this summer. Um, We've added additional Securitas personnel at Mary Ellen, Mason, at Jesse Thackeray. Um, just really having them out there this, this year has kind of transformed how we secure our buildings. It's, 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 um, I don't know that we could, we, were, we, we couldn't have done what we're doing now with the, with the staff that we had previously. It was just, we just didn't have enough staff to, to do it. Um, and just str struggling to keep Mason's doors secure. Um, there's so many doors and there's just nonstop people going in and out they don't shut properly so ha having the the exterior patrol over there is um, virtually eliminated that and and i check so there's always there's always certain doors that were notoriously left open um we've also teamed up with the falls church police and they've helped us with with kind of testing our security personnel um send, sending in people to help us you know find areas we could improve on we've done this a couple of times and we'll continue to do it and, and they, get, they they send us feedback and they don't tell us when they're coming i don't know nobody they just tell us after they've done it um and and thankfully we've, we've improved the, the, since the uh, first time we've done it um financial information it's you know we we budget for all of our equipment and and um any special things that we just i just worked through mr kimball and and dr jones to uh find uh, funds for that 
just future business recommendations, just continuing to fund our camera, ac camera and access control upgrades at all the schools. It's just one of those things, they, it's just like a computer, they're always going down and having to replace them, so we, we keep money in the budget for that. Um, something I'm hoping we might be able to do this year is um, try to improve some of our sidewalks at TJ on the front. We did some last year, but uh, the front ones we just weren't able to get to um, for a lot of reasons. So uh, working on getting some quotes for that now, and hopefully we can take care of some of that this, this um, summer or through the next school year. Um, with, con with As far as Mount Daniel goes, we're, you know, we're, we're working closely with Gr Grunley on the safety plans and how we're going to get the kids around uh, the construction and the staff around the construction. So um, I think that's sort of a, a, a fluid discussion that changes a little bit every week, how, what we're going to do and how we're going to, you know, make it work um, uh, moving forward with that. The, let's see, we're going to be adding another um, Securitas person um, over at Mount Daniel this, this next upcoming school year to help with that since there's going to be sort of a split office scenario so we'll have somebody that's going to be outside roaming and you know, making sure that the construction vehicles aren't you know f roaming out through the park parking lots when our kids are coming in and, and out of the building so uh, we're hopefully uh, that'll, that'll help out over there uh, one of the things that the police have asked for is that they um, are provided one a couple of uh, school radios that'll work off of our communication system um, the two systems don't work their system and ours don't really link there they use a like a 900 megahertz some type of system and it's just uh, we can't really link into that due to what they do um, so we're, we're gonna buy them a few radios have some in dis the dispatch center and then a few of their supervisors shift supervisors will have one in the patrol cars so that they can if they need to respond and obviously our, our SRO already has one and then uh, I guess the biggest thing we're doing as far as all this goes the city and the Virginia Department of Emergency Management are, are planning a full-scale um, kind of an, uh, I don't know, an uh, active shooter type scenario. You've seen these happen all over the region, but they want to host one here in Falls Church. So the city's leading that. They're working with our with our staff and playing that. We've had a few meetings already, and they're they're working towards others. And they're, I think their plan is to have the full scale one maybe this summer. I'm not sure if they're quite there yet. We're just waiting to hear back. Um, and that's all I have. Any questions? You may have any questions, Mr. Sharp? Yeah, uh, a written report. Is there uh, going to be a, a report? It will be on tomorrow. I will put it It'll okay. be up. Okay. okay. Uh, there's been quite a change in the metro uh, since the silver lines come in. Uh, have you noticed any uh, things that that uh, had an impact on what you all were were trying to do? Um, no, not th this, the same thing we've always had. We've always had metro riders that attempt to park in our lots or something like that. But Securitas and um, they patrol our lots. We tow vehicles when necessary, or um, and they're out there in the mornings um, when staff and students are arriving. So our parking's so limited, we generally would notice if there's a lot of extra cars showing up anyway, because um, the students will start complaining, teachers will start complaining. So, um, but I haven't really noticed any changes. It, including any any reduction in that kind of problem no <laughs> this, i mean it's just we have i haven't noticed any change at all with silver line openings we've, we've been so close to the orange line which is um uh parking lot parking lots over there are already always full anyway so we're same old same old thank you anyone else what? good no okay all thank right. you Sevi. thank you All right, now for the consent agenda, I would ask unanimous consent that we approve the agenda as amended. Hearing no objections, the consent agenda is approved. All right, Dr. Jones? I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay, no, we just, uh, we approved the amended consent agenda, so we're on to 7.01 authorization to hire. 
Um, authorization to hire is um, an item that we have on here every year and about this time of the year and it's so that if we need to hire somebody and not lose a candidate to another school division you're giving me the authority to be able to hire we do have some key positions coming up and our we're not meeting next week uh, as of where we were today as you know the last couple of weeks our schedule was off track um, and our next really official meeting right now is June 9th which is pretty late we are interviewing for a principal's job at MEH um, we will have some other positions that are key and it just gives me the authority to get people hired and get them signed so we don't lose them before we have a school board meeting and that's from now until when school starts in September and I always bring them to you if I can it's really just in between those meetings mr. chairman please I move that the Falls Church City Public School Board authorize the superintendent to hire staff as deemed necessary from now until the beginning of, the, of school for the fiscal year 16 school year the names of such individuals will be brought to the school board for approval at the next scheduled school board meeting. Second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No? The motion's Just, uh, passed. Please. We are going through the full process. Um, we actually issued a survey for input from teachers and parents, our middle school parents, and also to our fifth grade parents incoming on the traits and characteristics they'd like to see in the principal. We have an interview committee that is made up of staff. Uh, we also have senior staff, Tom Horn and Lisa Heyer on that, um, as well as support staff and parents, and they will be interviewing first round on Thursday. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Lawrence and, and school board, um, in order to um, keep keep our minutes consistent with the way we, we've done things in, in, in previous meetings, uh, could we go back to the consent agenda and get a motion and a, and a second? Oh, okay. The way we'd been doing consent agenda was unanimous consent. But we, we, did, we always had a motion and a second. Okay. To that extent, Mr. Chairman, may I move that the board approve the consent, the amended consent agenda right, uh, as presented? Second. I have a question. This is what I was talking yeah, to Dr. Yeah. Jones about when we were doing this the first time around. The approval of the student liaison to the school board is on the consent agenda, which is probably mm -hmm. fine, but I don't see it anywhere else in the agenda, and I, I, I wanted him to be introduced to us and have a chance to say a few words and Zach to have a chance to introduce mm -hmm. him and so I'm not sure where that fits into the agenda at this point but I think it's Make important that that, that happen. Oh. Yeah. oh so that was the problem between the printed that we saw yeah. and this. Okay. Yeah and what's online now so I don't know if we just need to add an, another item to section 7 or if, or, or if we want to pull this up and do it separately. Hi how are you? Yeah. Bad I night? Mean, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, I mean, I would just say we we Move it. adopt the consent agenda and pull that out and make it a separate item later in the schedule. Okay. Yeah, because that's yeah. how it was in the printed. Yeah. Well, the the problem we have, Zach, is the the online one. It doesn't have. Dorian as a, a separate agenda item, but the printed one did. So we were all going on the assumption that we were going to talk about it later. And, but as we were sitting up here, we just realized that it was not. So we just need to stay consistent. So we'll pull it out of here so that we can talk about it separately later on. Yes. And we'll, we'll discuss it and then vote yep. separately. Okay. okay. Great. We need 706. All right. we Do we need a, a cleaner yep. motion on that? What? Just as, as amended. Good as, good. as amended. Okay. As amended. So we have that. We have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Yes. Any opposed? No? <laughs> Great. All right. Thank you. Okay. Turn over to you. So where, where are we? We're at 7.02. 7.02. Oh, okay. So next up is the amendment to the 2015-2017 school board work plan. Dr. Jones? This was just um, a verbal commitment we made to the staff during the budgeting process that we were not going to add that extra day to the calendar and it's just making that official so it amends the work plan um, appropriately so and we'll take that off our work plan so that I don't get dinged at the end of the year for not adding a day. Um, 
but also so that uh, staff, we you know, officially let staff know that the, the board did act on it in good faith and, and stuck to our word. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, any questions for Dr. Jones on that? Okay. No. Seeing none, could I just like to him? thank Mr. Lawrence while he's not here <laughs> for his for his <laughs> diligence in carrying carrying that request through. Uh, not, not only budget time, but I anticipate uh, at this time too. So thank you, Mr. Wait, Lawrence. Wait, he's coming back in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Ch Mr. Chair, I move that the school board approve an amendment to the 2015. 2017 school board work plan not to add the additional work day for professional staff in fiscal year 16. Second. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Okay, thank you. Uh, next, we have a resolution, item 7.03, regarding uh, commitment to maintain traffic calming efforts in and around the Mount Daniel Elementary School. Dr. Jones, Mr. Lawrence, you guys have been um, taking point on this, so jump right in. Um, we have been working very hard with the community in and around Mount Daniel uh, to mitigate traffic over the last really year and a half. And they are very appreciative of the efforts that we've made and it is working in that we're trying to make sure on our schedule every time we have a big school event, uh, we do close the street to local traffic only. And that means that they can still get in their driveways and get up and down the street. And since Sevy is here tonight, I'll say thank you very much. It's added um, an extra element to his team uh, because they are the ones that stand at the bottom of Oak Street. So, but again, they're very appreciative. The one thing they have asked for is that um, they understand that the school board can't take action for future school boards of something that would be binding, but they did ask, was there something we could do in good faith to say that when we're all long gone, that the community would at least have a piece of paper to bring back to the next school board and superintendent and say, remember you said you were going to continue to try to do this for us. Um, so this is just a resolution um, to really make that long-term commitment that we're going to do the very best we can uh, with the traffic issues and to work with that community in and around Mount Daniel. Mr. Lawrence, did you need to add? Uh, no, I mean, you, you really hit it. It's, you know, the only thing better than, the only thing worse than living next to a school is living next to a school because you love having the school there, but you don't really like having the traffic all the time. And the neighbors have been great. Um, they've put up with a lot of congestion at times, and, and Tony has really gone above and beyond in terms of school events. I'll never forget the one time, the first time you would uh, bust everybody in for a school event and I was walking my dog up the street and I asked how the event had gone the night before and the neighbors literally didn't know something had even happened because the traffic just was not there. So it's, it's very much appreciated. So all this says is we commit to continue being a good neighbor and working on traffic and congestion and traffic calming and shuttling for large events and we hope that future school boards will do the same in the spirit of a, a good neighbor policy. We can't bind them, but you know, I think knowing Falls Church, the fact that we do this will matter to future boards. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Um, any questions, uh, any comments? Uh, I think I'll just go ahead. It's not that long. Uh, and I thank Mr. Lawrence for, uh, for drafting this. He, he leveraged his uh, experience on the Hill. Um, to, to come up with what I think is a, a very good statement. And for those uh, watching online who may not uh, have immediate access to it, I will think I'll just go ahead and read it quickly. Uh, it is a resolution to a commitment to maintain traffic calming efforts in and around the Mount Daniel Elementary School. Whereas the Falls Church School Board recognizes that the Mount Daniel Elementary School has been an integral part of the neighborhood for more than 60 years. And whereas the Falls Church School Board recognizes that a school enriches a community but also brings with it a certain amount of traffic and other challenges that affect the residential neighbors and whereas the Falls Church School Board has worked in good faith with the Fairfax County and City of Falls Church neighbors on the expression of the Mount Daniel School for several years and whereas the Falls Church School Board wishes to maintain and enhance its productive and mutually beneficial relations with the community and whereas the Falls Church School Board understands that it cannot bind the actions of future school boards therefore be it resolved that the Falls Church City School Board makes the good faith commitments below in the hope and belief that future school boards will adhere to them in the spirit of positive community relations and an overall good neighbor policy too. 
Continue long-term efforts to reduce parking and traffic congestion in and around Mount Daniel Elementary School. Close the city portion of North Oak Street to local traffic only and shuttling staff and community to the school for large school events. Uh, be mindful of scheduling activities during the day that could result in parking difficulties and work to spread those events across grades and or classrooms to reduce the number of cars at one time and continue to support a strong community partnership with the neighborhood association and waive the rental fee associated with quarterly meetings held outside of school hours in the common area of Mount Daniel Elementary School. So, Mr. Chairman, I move that the school board approve resolution 2-15 commitment to maintain, maintain traffic calming efforts in and around the Mount Daniel Elementary School as presented. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Sharp. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Okay, I'll just pass this down for signature. Thank you. Uh, so now we come to item 7.04, construction update. And construction update on all of our projects. We did have a construction update in morning announcements um, in the last couple of days. That was, I think, very informative. I had good feedback on that. Um, at Thackeray, thank you to everybody who was able to attend the ribbon cutting. That was a fantastic event. And the property looks amazing. And again, because Sevy's sitting out there, um, he, Sevy and his team worked incredibly hard to get that property the way that it looked, just literally planting flowers and just all sorts of activities. So thank you to Sevy and his team. And we are almost ready to sign off on that building. We will, of course, as we always do, make sure every little thing is perfect. Um, and we do not sign off until it is. But we're in a really good place right now. We are waiting on a, a front strip of grass um, where our staff have gone and seated and they're checking it almost daily. And it is going to take a little bit of time to grow, but um, that grass should be coming through shortly. At Mount Daniel, we are, um, of course, full steam ahead, getting ready for summer, and that will be um, all the big work will come ahead, and the demo is what comes first there. I was at the McLean uh, Citizens Association last Thursday, and that went very well. Um, we had a member of Fairfax County uh, was there from, uh, well, from Fairfax County Planning, and then also from the VDOT, and really did most of the talking in support of the project that uh, we had gone over and above to provide everything they'd ask for, uh, enrollment projections for 25 years where normally they wouldn't even get that, um, you know, what our busing looks like. And so they were able to really carry a lot of the load uh, for Grunley and Arcadis that night just because they said we were meeting every requirement and there was no reason that their staff in Fairfax County would not recommend approval at the 2232. So that was a very, very positive meeting. It was a late meeting, but it was very positive. Um, at TJ, as I have messaged the school board, uh, we are putting off the TJ HVAC for about 10 months. And in all honesty, it's one of those things when um, I thought about it the very first day, I was like, you've got to be kidding, because I'm such a schedule person, getting anything off schedule is not me. Um, but it's actually turned out, I think, to be much better for the staff when we really process the timing of it our whole second grade will be vacating that wing of the building, which is an older wing that needs new HVAC. So it actually means this summer there's no packing in that building, and that really was a welcome relief for their staff. So it, it turned out great. Um, for GM and MEH, we are, again, um, the school board did recommend you know, over a week ago for us to move forward with our visioning, uh, community visioning, and we are full steam ahead on that. We will have something in morning announcements probably Thursday. We saw the uh, advertisement that will go in the news press with the invitation uh, for the community visioning. It's going to be on June 6th, and again, you'll start seeing this everywhere from 9 to 12. So this is the first big event um, in this part of the community visioning. And we're also getting the stakeholder groups together um, to do all of those invitations. And there will be small stakeholder interviews that happen after the big community visioning. And again, this is working with Cooper Carey and them helping us uh, guide through that process. Um, and I think that's it. Updates on, you want to briefly one? mention lead? For oh, city sure. Council. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was in front of city council last night um, where um, I was asked to come and talk about LEAD and for Mount Daniel. And I have expressed to them that we are not um, at a point where it is recommended that we would even try to go forward with LEAD due to the timing issues. It's very, very complex. Um, however, we do have uh, one or two members of council that really want to continue the discussion. And um, I am 
setting one council member up with some members of the construction team to have a phone conference tomorrow so that they can hear it from the construction team what are all the complexities of even trying to do it um, and today you know as I was meeting with um, one of the people on the construction team they use the word chaos if that's what we would like to have and I said well of course I don't want to have chaos um, the biggest issue is really for us is the whole planning component whenever if we were going to have lead silver the school board had decided to do that it would have been an RFP first of all we would have had you know Grunley would have been prepared to, to present that we didn't do that um, it was a it was an ad alternate for us and we let the City Council know that all the way through November and December and said we really needed to make that decision by December and if you remember at that point of the budget we were talking about a flat budget and having another hundred thousand dollars for lead was not a possibility at that or they had not they took no action on it and they still have taken no action on it um, and we would have had our commissioning agent in at the ground uh, which you have to have when you get to your 35 percent plans that commissioning agent is supposed to be checking everything giving us review comments supposed to be there at 65 they're supposed to be there at 95 we are half the way through this right now not only are we half the way through that component um, but Grunley has already put out for all of their subcontractors and the bids for the people that would do the work. Um, so they, they would then also need to go back and do a change order for all of those subcontractors. And there would still be no guarantee that even if we tried to push it through, uh, that we would get lead certification. Uh, we could actually be wasting $100,000. So it's very complex. There's lots of different issues, but again, I'll have the councilman uh, speak with the construction team tomorrow, and hopefully after they have that discussion, he'll understand how difficult this timing is. We don't have two weeks to waste, and you know, I tried to remind council last night, our time to finish this building is October. That's after school starts. That's what the contract is signed for, October of 2016, and that's because we had a November referendum so no one would sign a contract for us without you know having ample time however the construction company is doing everything imaginable because they know mm -hmm. the expectation is we want to be in to start school and we're on time right now and we don't want to do anything to throw that off kilter so that's where we are right now okay um and then while we're on the topic of well first of all any questions about the mount daniel lead issue mr sharp okay not about lead specifically <laughs> but uh uh, the Mount Daniel process more generally. Uh, is there a point uh, currently where we are seeing the guaranteed maximum price uh, delivered? We are, we are really there right now, I would say um, even tomorrow. And the one last piece that they were working on was the stormwater component. Um, and everything that uh, where we were last week was we're right at our guaranteed maximum price, which is 15 for construction. We're right on target. And, and I, I tell them when that's the expectation. So we, I, we will be. I mean, I can say that tonight. We will be. <laughs> well, it's just extraordinary work uh, considering the circumstances uh, all around the, the work with the community that, you know, we discussed previously, but also the, the uh, sort of uh, guinea pig situation that we're in with stormwater management that, up there and it being such a difficult topography uh, in, in, any, in any case, whether you have new, new rules or old rules. And just, just extraordinary that we're uh, making good progress. Thank you very, very much for all the work. You're very welcome. Mm -hmm. Well, Doc, yeah, Ms. Carney. Um, is there a date set for final approval by Fairfax County? Um, the 2232 is on June 18th and after we go through the hearing then the next thing will be we would get our permits um, we're trying to find out from them what is the lead time or how long will it take from the 2232 to actually get a permit and they have not been able to answer that yet um, but they're really pressing to get that answer okay. yeah and, and then with respect to Mount Daniel you mentioned stormwater but but for the members of the community community who are interested in that could you just bring us up to date on the stormwater situation right yeah the very first time i updated you that's when they were just getting in to figure out all the requirements on stormwater and um, one of the first design thoughts that grinley had which would have been typical for stormwater they were having to look at the water that would run away from the school and the piping that would go down oak well once fairfax county let them know that not just going down oak they were going to have to go 
all the way over to West Metro. They had to go back and say, well, that's not going to work. That would be a tremendous, tremendous cost for Grunley, um, especially. And so then they went back with another design, you know, working with the engineers. And they're actually doing a retention system, which I think I mentioned before, mm -hmm. which is very similar to what they did at Thackeray. It's just much, much bigger. Mm -hmm. And it's on the back end of the kind of a parking lot playground area. And you can see it on the plans. And I almost brought them tonight, but the <laughs> next meeting we have, I'll bring the big, the big set and some pictures for you so everyone could see. Um, so the, the stormwater right now is probably the most difficult part is it you know messed up the blacktop which we kind of anticipated that was going to happen but um we'll get the blacktop back it just means you lose it you know during playtime and uh, while they're putting it in mm -hmm. but it's it's so far i mean everything's going well and there's no additional cost that would take the project above what we've committed to the community to spend no okay no and i i you know and I'm also, I mean, really, really hopeful that this project will be just like all the other projects we've done, which have been very successful. Thank you, Dr. Jones. Just one last question. It, it does seem to me that the city is learning a lot about stormwater. Um, Thackeray, uh, I think the tennis courts, from what I've seen, are going, I mean, they'll be up very soon. I think they were slated for early May and so um, is there any conversation going on between what we've learned and any information we could transmit to Grunley to help out with some of the lessons we've learned on stormwater or are they are they good there there we've got an expert team okay. that does this all all over and uh, the place and so I feel really good about them and um, it was just really figuring out the new regulations because even Mount okay. Daniel was under the old um, oh. yeah so no but they, they've done well in Fairfax County I you know and I, I have shared this with Mr. Shields that uh, the relationship with Fairfax County I've always heard it was it's really a difficult you know to do construction but I have to say with Fairfax County they have been outstanding and they have been great to work with. Um, they've been very much partners with us, uh, answering questions at the table. Um, so we've been very, very appreciative. And the same way with stormwater, helping everybody understand what are the requirements, what do you need to do. So um, we're all, we're in a good partnership with them. Well, that's good news. Excellent uh, report. Thank you very much. Any other questions? No? Yeah, okay. In, in the construction vein, uh, one last uh, point. I think we have scheduled during this next year for replacing the athletic field. Uh, at GM and uh, recently came to my attention that there's a petition drive going on in Loudoun County uh, to have them exclude the uh, recycled tires as an infill product that can be used. And their, their petition references a previous adoption of such a ban by Montgomery County, Maryland. And so I've sent the board tonight some information about both processes. Uh, the uh, Montgomery County ban was apparently adopted in January. Um, they're uh, looking to uh, do what they <laughs> uh, find is a, some plant material is the, uh, the thing that they're mentioning as the, as the substitute infill. And uh, the Loudoun County petition references them and it also, it also mentions that there's been uh, testimony before the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors uh, with similar request, but uh, apparently not a petition drive at this point. All right, thank you, Mr. Sharp. Uh, just so I'm clear, item 70, are we now on our s liaison? Uh, you were going to okay. add that. Yeah. Okay, so now, now we come to the 7.05 uh, approval of student liaison to the school board. Um, I can introduce. Zach, would you like to? Uh, of course. Continue? This is Dorian. Um, we chose him for just a few different things. I, I don't Come think on any up. of you have met him yet. You're going to talk after me, so be prepared. Um, but mostly uh, due to a few specific things that he showed us um, when we voted on him. And that's first and foremost, um, his experience and eloquence with public speaking. We saw a little bit of that, and it, it's, you know, I'm, I'm sure he's ready for the position. Um, interest in policy and political systems. He's shown that you know, in Mali United Nations and other experiences, and his experience in discussion and analysis of policy, um, maturity and responsibility, uh, his interest in student participation in local, local government, something that he mentioned, as well as ideas on how to engage students further in civic affairs, which seemed like a, a, a you know, great plus for this position. So I'm really looking forward to see what he does. And the floor is yours. Dorian. Thank you. Uh, good evening. I'm Dorian Charpentier. I moved here at the start of ninth grade, and I have a brother 
who is also currently in ninth grade at GM. Um, I took interest in this position actually last year because um, I, during uh, my government class, I thought um, I wanted to participate in that, in that as well. I wanted to um, debate, uh, discuss, um, uh, come up with ideas that would affect um, not only me, but the people around me. And um, uh, really the aspect of um, contributing or, or exposing other people's views and fighting for them is what appeals the most to me. Um, I've uh, followed some issues. Obviously, I'm not up to speed because I'm, I haven't been here this whole time, but I've followed issues concerning um, teacher salaries or the um, new school, for example, and I hope that uh, Zach will help me uh, engineer a smooth transition. Um, and uh, additionally, I'd like to meet with some of you in a more informal setting so we can get to uh, know each other and so um, we can uh, get some sort of atmosphere working. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for stepping up to this. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure that we'll be uh, getting to know each other very well. Um, would uh, anybody on the board like to uh, have a, a few remarks? I just want to say welcome and thank you for taking the challenge and join the club. We're all learning, so <laughs> don't be shy. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, and I'd like to echo what Michael said. In terms of being up to speed, um, we're, we're running as fast as you will be, so uh, trust us. We know how you feel, and, and definitely all of us, I'm sure are, are very willing to meet with you separately to, uh, to talk. And when it comes to the budget, um, trust us, no question is a dumb question because if you've got the question, somebody else does. So welcome. Thank you. Ms. Carney, Mr. Webb. I just want to, again, welcome you. We're looking forward to working with you. And definitely, as Mr. Lawrence said, we definitely make ourselves available to talk with you about any issues and kind of get you as up to speed as we are with some of the issues that we have coming before us, but we look forward to working with you and in the near future. Welcome. I look forward to learning about your interests and uh, your strategies for representing the students and uh, look forward to hearing about uh, the students' interests as they develop in the coming year. Thank you. Yeah, I think an initial good project would be maybe you can uh, get a, a Twitter account going and explain the fund balance in a single tweet. <laughs> I'll get right on that. So. How about world um, peace or a cure for in, cancer? In 140 characters. <laughs> exactly. So, all right, again, we're welcome. It's a, it's a pleasure to have you. And uh, could I get a motion? Not sure we have one, but so, so uh, do we need Mr. Chair, I move that the school board accept the nomination of Dor school board approve the appointment of Doran Charpentier as the student liaison to the school board for the 2015-2016 school year. Okay. Okay, Mr. Campbell, why don't you call the roll for something like this? Please? Oh, certainly, with pleasure. Mr. Ankuma, aye. Mr. Castillo, aye. Ms. Carney, yes. Mr. Lawrence, yes. Mr. Sharp, yes. And Mr. Webb. Yes. Thank you. Congratulations. Welcome aboard. Congratulations. Thank you. Can we get a picture? Yes. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Let's sneak one in, huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Close 
So you're jumping right in. That's good to see. Um, all right. Uh, we come now to item 8.01, future agenda topics. This is where we sit down and come up with any additional things for the agenda down the road. So this is your chance to give us more business to <laughs> consider. So Ms. Carney. Thank you. I, I have one. I mentioned this. Um, a little while back, but having just lived through yet another budget season in the City of Falls Church, I wanted to remind the board of it. And that is, uh, as you all know, I've been proud every year as a member of this school board, at least for the last five or six years, to sign a uh, code of ethics and behavior, uh, which this school board, I think, does a beautiful job of adhering to in our work together. Um, I suggested a little bit ago that we take a stronger leadership role in the community on that topic because I feel like um, civil discourse is uh, degrading in our little city and I, I, I'm not happy about that. So I'd like to see the school board discuss whether or not we should encourage the city council to adopt a similar code, uh, whether we should ask our boards and commissions as a, as a part of being appointed to agree to sign such a code, whether our student government and student organizations should adopt such a code of civility. Um, because uh, you know we're a small town uh, we're not Richmond, we're not Washington, D.C. We're mostly neighbors, largely acquaintances, friends, and family. And I don't think there's any need for the tone of the conversation that takes place in the city in some places. So I'd like to see it stop. And I think the school board should be the leader in that. So I'm hoping my colleagues will agree and at a future time we can uh, take that topic up. Thank you. That's an excellent suggestion. Uh, and and I, I look forward to seeing it implemented. Um, uh, any other thoughts, suggestions, proposals, queries? Other, other than the six, 16 budget. What about it? 17 <laughs> budget. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Um, yes, I, 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 I think we'll, we'll have a good eye to that. Um, Mr. So any other, if you, any other, so I think we will be talking about that. Um, laying the groundwork, Absolutely. getting going sooner. Uh, Mr. Sharp, any, you, you look as if yeah, you've Yeah, well, got I think there are things that are likely in the pipeline. Uh, I just want to uh, recall ones that were mentioned before, the advisory policy, the 5.12, uh, and, and at a recent meeting I mentioned that uh, we, we might ask our folks uh, who deal with uh, athletic matters uh, whether there are kinds of equipment or rule changes that we should be asking the VHSL to join us in adopting uh, or whether in some instances we may uh, do something a little different than what others uh, may choose to do and still be allowed to engage in the competition. Uh, so I'd like to you know, just, just, just recall that those, those things were requested previously. Thank you, Mr. Sharp. Uh, I will channel the spirit of uh, Margaret Ward, um, who is not here because she's at her son Brandon's lacrosse game. There was some talk about should we meet on Tuesday, I mean on Wednesday instead of Tuesday because of games um, and other activities. I don't know what the feeling of the board is. I mean, there's always going to, whichever night we meet is usually going to be a bad night. Um, so I think at a certain point we should sit down and think about, do we want to go there? <laughs> is it better the devil we know than the devil we don't? Uh, and I honestly don't know. Um, but, but I think it's worth having a conversation about. Um, it does tend to conflict with a lot of things. But again, no evening is a good evening. Um, any other thoughts? Mr. Chairman, the, the PTAs typically have used Wednesday as their meeting nights, uh, but they're, not all of them may be occupied by that, uh, so we may, we, we may find some space. Maybe we should meet, you know, 
Thursday at 7.30 in the morning. <laughs> that might be, but, but no, you're right. It, everything, 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 everything cascades, and, and you're right, that, that there, there, will, there will be uh, second and third order effects. Um, We've had good attendance, so I guess we reflect this year. Yeah. Haven't we, really? Yeah, so. All right, moving on then to item nine, the superintendent's report, Dr. Jones. Um, just a couple of things tonight. First of all, we're you know full steam ahead with SOL testing, which we are just overjoyed and absolutely love every year. Um, <laughs> you probably saw the article in uh, Washington Post where the first couple of days of testing, Pearson went down twice nationally. And so we were very fortunate the morning, the first morning it went down, our kids had not logged on yet. So we also waited just a few extra minutes to make sure everybody else in the country logged on again. And so if they got kicked off, we would be, we were last on. So uh, we only had a few students who were affected uh, the second day who just literally had to wait for a very short while and then submit their assessments. Where there are school divisions, uh, I know there's one school division where they have to retest 85% of the students. Um, so we were very, very fortunate. And they, they were big assessments. We happened to be doing reading and math on both of those days. So um, hopefully Pearson will have a good track record to get us through the rest of this. But I let the board know more than anything because when kids go home and say, oh, my computer didn't work or I they couldn't log on, they tend to think it's an infrastructure issue and it was a Pearson issue. So um, we were celebrating Agnes Meyer over the last two weeks. Uh, I say two or three weeks. I can't remember. Weren't we there last week? The week before. Um, we celebrated Mr. Bird for the Leadership Award, which was a, a great evening at the Washington Post and so, so well deserved um, for Mr. Bird. Tonight, we were actually at Washington Post before this meeting uh, celebrating Nan Hoff and uh, again, an outstanding educator. And the parent that was there that had nominated her um, as they were reading about Nan, she called it the kindergarten lottery where you get to find out which class your child is in. And she won the lottery when she got Nan Hoff. <laughs> and she was actually in tears. Uh, so, I mean, it was just a great, great event so congratulations to both of those great educators who set a super example and it's interesting I just have to share this but uh, from the community survey that we have for the middle school principal there are several I mean a lot who have said what you really need in the middle school is just another Mr. Bird that's what that's just personality wise that loves kids and so I just share that I thought that was kind of neat great. to read um, we did find out today uh, that for the Virginia Excellence Awards which are given by uh, the Board of Education uh, at the VDOE that there were only two school divisions that were recognized were one of those two in Virginia uh, for that award so really excited um, to have that I also want to share that uh, Liz Germer uh, was invited this year and asked, I say invited, she was asked to present um, at the Virginia Council for Administrators for Special Education. And that was because our special education results, as you know, are number one or number two in every continent area in the state. And so special educators are looking at Falls Church and wanting to know what are the interventions, what are the things that we're doing to help kids be successful. And so she's presenting at VCase uh, over the next three days. So that's exciting for us. Um, and then on Thursday, just as a reminder, we are uh, having our Celebration of Excellence, which are all of our nominees and our National Board certified teachers. And then as of today, uh, we were all there this morning to recognize a Virginia lottery teacher. And uh, how many did they say? They get 800 850. nominations? 850. And I think they choose, was it five or eight? Eight teachers. Um, and it was Dr. Dippold. And so it was just delightful to be there. And again, one of those educators that has not only had an impact in our school system, but in our community. The projects he does are real life, really project based. So congratulations. And we're going to celebrate all those educators on Thursday. Um, starts early around 4 ish, say, or 434. And then after that, there's another event that I just want to you know, bring your attention to. Mr. Kimball is presenting at the American Legion um, on really local composite index, and then also he'll talk about cost of competing. And there's some other people with him, including Delegate Simon. And as you know, um, it's really trying to educate our community about why it costs more in Falls Church because we are one of nine locations in the state of Virginia who get very, very little state funding and it makes a tremendous impact. And Hunter, I, I was saying to Ms. Carney, I think yesterday in an email, we've had a geeky few days, which we really <laughs> like, uh, running all kinds of numbers. And Hunter has just done a phenomenal job. So I hope you can come Thursday and hear. I think you'll all learn because I think, um, you, I would say Hunter's probably even learned over these last couple of days because we keep running things in different ways. Um, but he's doing a tremendous job with that. So I can't wait to hear him on Thursday. At what time? 
Uh, what time does it actually start? Is that 7 7 or 7.30? Ooh, it's 7, 7 or 7.30. 7.30. 7 7 Thank you. All, all my, all, everything <laughs> runs together. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jones. And now we come to the board and student liaison comments. Uh, Mr. Witzel, would you like to kick things off? <laughs> um, I just really wanted to thank everyone, the board, Dr. Jones, uh, Mr. Kimball Muscadal, and of course, Ms. Hyde, my seating partner, on um, this is a great year. It's been such an, an awesome experience. I've really been able to learn so much through our relationships and just through the, you know, every day, regardless if it was, you know, one of those ones that goes to 10 p.m. or a budget meeting, but it's, you know, despite that, it's, it's, I'm just so thankful to have this learning opportunity and it's so appreciative of all of you. Um, I really got to see how, you know, people can have impact on com the community and the passion and motivation of all of you just to keep working at these kind of tough issues uh, on such a local scale. I'm really excited to see Dorian. Um, and thrilled to see you know what you do with the the board and and how how you can um, you know work with students more and, and start new initiatives on your own and I'm really confident in your ability and excited to see what you do so thank you all so much it's been a, it's been well, incredible it's, year. Well, it's been a pleasure to have you and uh, before before we let you off the hook, um, could you just tell us a little bit about your plans for next year for college? Of course, I'm going to continue in helping to engage and develop in higher education. I'm going to a four-year startup university called Minerva. Um, it's, it's, it started two years ago, and uh, I will be the first graduating class. And so um, that's going to be really exciting. And there's just a few different components. It's really ingrained in travel. I'll be spending um, my four years in seven different cities. Um, I, it, they've tried to use um, Co uh, Dr. Coslin, uh, a Harvard dean of science who's now our, our dean, his 30 years of research on how learning happens to create engaging uh, classes on our active learning platform, which is basically a nice Skype. And so all the uh, classes are discussion based with no lecture. And so I'm really excited to kind of help create something new on the education scale and be able to be involved in the, you know, the, the organization of my own you know, learning. So. Hopefully and there, is there an international <laughs> is there an international component to that too? Yeah, um, it isn't. It isn't a public school. It isn't. A, it isn't a U.S. funded school. Um, it's completely. They they call it their admissions process complete uh, meritocracy. And so about eighty percent of students are international. Only twenty percent are American. And and will you go anywhere? Oh, of course, um, yeah. Internationally, it's, the first years in San Francisco, uh, and then from then on, it's Buenos Aires. No, Berlin, Buenos Aires, Bangalore, Seoul, London, and Istanbul. So it's so hard to be you. I can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited to be able to do that. Well, well I think I, I heard about that, and I just had to ask you yeah. because it sounds really cool, and yeah. we hope that uh, you will let us know how it goes course, and yeah. what you're discovering. When I'm coming back, you'll see me at, the, at one of these meetings. So. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you. All right, so we'll start with Mr. Ankuma and do our comments. Well, it seems like the common theme around um, my liaison assignments are all about leadership changes uh, at the, with the Gifted and Talented program, we're losing Mr. Thackeray. He's been there for a while. With the PTSA, uh, Gabby Sanders stepped down and uh, Rick White and a few others have taken up the leadership mantle there. And even at this afternoon's four o'clock peak meeting with the superintendent in attendance, some transitions are gonna take place. So that's just been the general trend. Um, uh, I just want to point out to the lady who spoke about the star assessment that that came up at our gifted and talented meeting yesterday, so it's not off our radar. I just want to show you it's under consideration, so we're looking at that for what it's worth. Uh, just uh, coincidental that you mentioned it, but I thought I'd let you know about that. Um, obviously, you mentioned the PTSA. Thank them for their support with the uh, with the budget and getting that approved and all the fine energy they put behind it. Um, Nothing new at the chamber. I was at the board meeting last week, but um, otherwise it's the transitions and things are winding down for the summer. Hopefully we'll pick up later on in the year. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Uh, just, sorry, just a couple things. The, uh, the opening at the Thackeray School was a wonderful event. I mean, the, the number of people from the, the Thackeray family who came into town, uh, people who had gone to the old Easter Steels came because they wanted to see what had happened to their old building. I mean, it was, it was wonderful. Lou Olam was there. Um, it was just a great time. And, you know, kids and parents and grandparents and, you know, the Smol Smolinskis showed up. So, 
So that was that was fantastic. Um, just one comment about uh, our, our action on GM last week. I, I really think that not accepting the uh, the unsolicited proposal was the right idea because it's going to help us do a, a more coherent and thought out process than uh, what could have been a, a rushed process. And the one thing I'd like to say, I, I think there's misconceptions in the public that we had the option of accepting it and just going forward with it without any competition or talking to anybody else. I've seen things written about that. And I just want to clarify, that was never even a possibility. It's not something we would have considered, and it's not something we could have legally done. We would have had to have competition even if we had accepted it. I think the biggest word problem we had was accept was the incorrect word. So um, I do think we took the right step, and I think we're well on our way to, uh, to getting a new high school. And just a couple words on Zach. Um, you know, great, great enthusiasm from the start. I still remember sitting at Starbucks with you and Maeve and, you know, her having ideas and, and you having ideas and me coming away with a, a headache. Um, <laughs> I, I think your, your two biggest accomplishments this year are, well, three. You understand the budget more than you think, which is kind of amazing for, for anyone your age. Secondly, you really put in the work to get us more students on our advisory committees. Um, I'm, I'm sort of pressed to think if we have any right now that does not have a, a student representative, which is fantastic. And I'm, I'm glad to see that the city followed you know, our example. And uh, we've got students now pretty much everywhere telling adults what they think, and adults are listening, which is, I think, the, the other good part. Secondly, you put in a, a great process for getting Dorian and, and people in the future where it's very organized, you've got a good vetting process, not only for you know, the, the student liaison to the, the board, but also the student liaison to the committees where there's an application process, there's a review process, you meet with administrators and teachers, and getting things organized matters. Having somebody who comes in and does a great job but doesn't leave something behind for others to be able to continue, it's, it's a mixed blessing. What you did was you did a great job and you left a process in place that we can follow, we can change a little, and we can build on. So, you know, you, you left a legacy and we thank you for it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. We'll go down all the way to Mr. Sharp and work our way back in. Okay, I want to thank uh, Dr. Jones and Chief Gavin for initiating an application for an award. Uh, regarding the bus camera program. And uh, while we don't know who's won the award, uh, there is a luncheon tomorrow uh, at which uh, uh, Nancy Hendrickson, the, the uh, director for our transportation program, and myself, uh, parent uh, Stephanie Oppenheimer will be attending, and perhaps uh, one or two others uh, who, who may be available. <laughs> Thank, thanks uh, for accommodating uh, uh, several seats there, but uh, we, we look forward in any case to uh, uh, enjoying seeing the different uh, programs that are uh, going to be uh, showcased there and, and uh, uh, hoping to come back at least with uh, uh, a better understanding of, of how, how well we've done and, and to give appropriate recognition to uh, all the people who, who contributed to a, a much safer uh, situation for our students uh, getting on and off the buses. The uh, reason I'm wearing a red shirt tonight is that I'm a uh, recent member of the Lions Club and uh, very, uh, very novice uh, in that organization. They're celebrating tonight uh, at, the, uh, at the Italian Cafe on Lee Highway, their 75th anniversary. And they are uh, acknowledging the efforts of many generations of people, including those who started the Child Development Center many years ago, those who started the Chamber of Commerce in 1950, and uh, who continue the work and service in the community to this day, uh, including uh, the Bushow family, who are going to be recognized for some of their services uh, appropriately. Uh, they'll be the Grand Marshals, that is Barry, Barry and Kathy Bushow will be Grand Marshal uh, for the Memorial Day celebration coming up uh, this coming Monday. Um, I, I want to uh, certainly encourage uh, those who might be interested in 
school board or city council uh, to step forward and do so quickly <laughs> because uh, time is, is short before the petitions need to be submitted uh, on June 9th uh, that uh, would qualify candidates for running for either the council or the board. And uh, also want to point out, at least in the budget that we recently adopted, there was some additional money for uh, stipend for board members uh, that would begin to be available uh, with the uh, new terms uh, in January. So at least uh, perhaps enough money to cover uh, child care expenses uh, in the evening for meetings. Uh, also, I just uh, uh, mentioned again the uh, uh, materials that I would ask go to the materials for board review that had to do with the uh, the turf field issue. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. Sharp. Mr. Webb. Uh, thank you. Uh, continuing the vein of Mr. Ankuma, uh, with my liaison with the elementary school board, uh, PTA, the transition of leadership has begun there as well. I went to their end of school year ice cream social on Sunday to um, to kind of meet some of their new the new leadership and also kind of congratulate Trish on doing a great job job with uh, running that organization for the last a couple of years. Uh, the daycare advisory committee's meeting was postponed until tomorrow, and I'll be able to update that for the next meeting. And then also, I want to uh, thank Dr. Jones. Uh, as she mentioned in the school board uh, uh, report on last Friday, of working numerous times in lots of emails and phone calls. Uh, as of right now, the tentative date for the First Lady, uh, Ms. McAuliffe, uh, to come visit um, Mary Ellen Henderson is on June 10th at 11, between 11 and 1130. Um, she has a great interest in healthy meals. Um, for students and she presented an award to to the school system I believe now almost a last year and a half year. last year last summer uh, and said that she would like to come in and see what we do in person and that was the date that worked so she will uh, tentatively right now is planned to be here on the 10th of June um, over at Mary Ellen Henderson so we're looking forward to hosting her here on here at our schools for that day um, that's it for me tonight thank you mr. Webb Ms. Carney. Thank you very much. Um, as all of you know, um, the, I am the city's appointed member of the College Board at Northern Virginia Community College, and so every so often I like to give you a little bit of an update about what's going on over there. Um, the big thing that's going on over there was last Sunday we had graduation, and so I was pleased and honored to go to that graduation. Uh, a couple of things I would share with you about it. There were about 7,500 graduates. They had to have two ceremonies at the Patriot Center because there were so many graduates. And um, those graduates, a uh, hundred different languages are spoken in their homes. There was a point during the ceremonies when they asked people to give a whoop if they were the first person in their family to go to college, and it was just huge noise. So mm -hmm. many kids there, the first kids to go to college in their family. So it was just a really terrific, terrific time. Um, and uh, I hadn't been to a, a, a community college graduation ceremony before. I was just very, very impressed. Um, the speaker was the, our governor, Terry McAuliffe, and I had a chance to speak with him and share with him how I enjoyed meeting his wife last summer when she provided us with the award and how excited we are to have her come visit us. Um, he asked his assistant to come over and said, is it scheduled or do I need to ask him to schedule it? And I said, no, <laughs> it's all good. Um, but I did have a chance to share with him all the initiatives that we've undertaken as a board to ensure that our kids have access to food, to technology, to books, and to all the support that they need. Uh, here so that no child in our jurisdiction uh, is not ready to learn and um, he congratulated me on those efforts and I congratulate each of you on those efforts as well because um, they're very 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 unusual so that was really um, that was really special um, the second thing is uh, Jesse Thackeray oh my gosh what a great little place <laughs> I mean what a stunning little place I wish Sebi was still here so I could thank him personally you'll have to convey that to me but the building and grounds are just absolutely beautiful. I had a chance to meet the staff who were there, and they love, love, love the building. They're so thrilled to be there. They're, I mean, they just 
smile and their faces shine and I mean it's just absolutely I can't imagine a better environment for our young kids to go and to learn and so that was great it was great to see the Thackeray's uh, it was great to see Llewellyn I hadn't seen him for a while so you know all the um, all the self smart people were there um, but I also wanted to take a minute to recognize John Lawrence um, no one recognized him specifically that evening but John was really the um, school board member who took that little project on his back and worked with Tony very closely to make sure it happened. He invested dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of hours with dozens and dozens of community members to, to make that building a reality. And so I just I want to thank you for that. You, you know, since you've been on the board, you have really been our leader in terms of a, a variety of facilities matters. You do a great job, and so I really appreciate it. Thank you. And those are my comments for tonight. Thank you, Ms. Carney. Um, well, I was putting off a homework assignment, and Marty was playing truant officer, but I, I finally had the pleasure. Uh, Zach, I signed your diploma, um, and, <laughs> as well as everybody else's. Unfortunately, unfortunately, it takes two other signatures before you're in the clear. I did. So, I did <laughs> oh, okay, well, now you're down to one. So, uh, toe the line. Uh, but that was a lot of fun. Um, this is any time of the year seems to be the best time of the year, but this is always a great time of year. We've got the many award ceremonies that have happened or that are coming. Uh, the recognition of Nan Hoff and Mr. Bird, um, as well as Marty's recognition and so many other people who, who make Falls Church what it is. And uh, I think Mr. Lawrence was talking about some of the things that Mr. Witzel had done with respect to processes. And I think, um, you know, there's a habit that we develop and I think we, we institutionalize and personalize at the same time a lot of habits that generate excellent results year in and year out. Um, a lot of playoff activity going on. Um, tennis team had some successes last night. Soccer teams are doing well, I think. Baseball is still in the hunt, so a lot of evening events going on. I'd also like to thank the many parents who work uh, to staff concessions. Um, they do a great job, um, and you know it's it's amazing how much participation there is that's visible this time of year. Uh, Memorial Day parade is coming up next week. Another great thing. Um, I would I would call out uh, the vice mayor. I saw him at Civil War Day the other day, which is uh, you know another form of institutionalized education that we have here that's not formal but I think it's a great reminder of uh, you know of our history um, I think the, the the last thing I would say is I would I would echo Ms. Carney's remarks about Mr. Lawrence's hard work on Mount Daniel and Jesse Thackeray and really do appreciate all that he's doing these days Dr. Jones you too day in and day out uh, are doing well and I will have to criticize your characterization of the award that came out today as stunningly inadequate. Um, <laughs> I think this will come out tomorrow in morning announcements, but uh, you know there were two divisions in 109 schools that earned the Board of Education Excellence Award. So, you know, two divisions, um, and. That was the City of Falls Church. Uh, I think in that one, a specific school that was named was uh, George Mason. And then two divisions and 137 schools earned the Board of Education Distinguished Achievement Award. Again, Falls Church was one of them and Mary Ellen Henderson was named as a school. So, you know, I think we're, we're punching above our weight these days. So, well done to everybody, thank you. Now we come to the approval of minutes, of which we have none. So, <laughs> and so we end with a whimper and uh, not a bang. <laughs> so again, uh, Mr. Charpentier, welcome. Mr. Witzel, thank you. And uh, we finished at a relatively decent hour tonight, so thank you. Really <laughs>